A little dilly doll here on the subject matter. Why are we here tonight, Justin? All right. Everyone, we have a special guest here in room 403. Today, we have Roderick Abercrombie Smith. Hello. And um, with us always is Caesar. As always. Yeah. So I want to say, uh, ever since I met you, I've always been a fan of your art. Obviously. I'm looking, I'm looking at one of the best paintings I've ever done in my life up in your wall, bro. Yeah, I love it. I I I loved your art. I appreciate it. I got it together then, but I definitely, yeah, it's one of the better ones. And I saw it, and you recognize it, and I appreciate it. I took it. I don't know if I was the first person to buy your artwork on at McLeod's. Probably not, but so like, of, there, you were very much a big part of that whole kind of period. You know, mm -hmm. it's just Caesar came up to me one dinner, uh, one night, and. Um, I had my exhibition up and it was running and there was a lot of activity and he just said straight up that painting how much and I was and it, it put food in my belly and it put gas in my tank and it made me survive in LA for a couple more weeks or a month or two actually that I might pay for which was me mm -hmm. anyway um, but for someone like you a young professional and you don't have money to burn to invest in art it always um, is something that surprises me. And I've worked with social workers that don't have huge incomes and involved with community projects in Scotland. That they're social workers, they're paying the mortgage and just having a little bit left over, but they would pay off X amount per, per month over a period of time uh, to pay for my art. And it was a social worker in Glasgow who just got my art up on the wall. And, yeah, it, it was good. It was good art. It was like things. That, it just it just amazes me how people from you know they because I'm so busy paying my bills and stuff. The last thing I'm thinking of is buying fine art, <laughs> food. That's a good idea. Gas, mm -hmm. hmm, not bad. You know that bill, hmm. <laughs> piece of fine art. Oh. You know, it, it, you know, me being an artist is still a strange concept that people can invest on a day-to-day -day level in local artists. I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. Anyway, so what was Justin? Why were we here again tonight? <laughs> I, 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 I kind of, I'm dying to see this. Yeah. So well, since I bought the art, mm -hmm. I've always wanted to commission you to paint a portrait of myself. Just you. Well, well, yeah. At the time, this was. Just you at the time. At the time. This was a long Thank time ago. This guy. Well, I've always met him. It's <laughs> just, I, I've known Justin for 10 years. Yeah, around. It's about 10 years. It's yeah. been since high school. Yeah, since high school. It's been 10 years. And um, it just so, ha when I bought the painting, actually, Justin was here visiting from Washington. This one. Yeah. He was there when I bought it. Yeah. So when I went back to the table, I made an announcement that I bought your artwork. <laughs> that was great. Oh. Uh, and then, coincidentally, later, uh, when I moved in here to room 403 with Justin, yeah. um, we've been blessed to be able to uh, pretty much make all our dreams come true since it's dual income and we both have the mentality of why not. And you love what you do and you're making a living. Work exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's part of the why not mentality. So that's why together we commissioned you to paint a dual portrait of us in classic Caravaggio style. So how do you think I did? Like, from the photograph onwards? I like the artistical choices you did. Mm -hmm. Like keeping... Both of him the lighting? Because that's... To me, Caravaggio was not a painter. He was a film director. And you just had that whole frame. And there's a drama happening within that. And he used, like lenses and stuff to just basically be one step away from a camera in the whole process of accuracy um so he's cutting edge but i think that trickery is uh, dwarfed by his sense of drama why is judith standing there cutting a guy's throat you know what's the story and the authenticity of his characters are like they were the pimps and prostitutes of the time. They were visceral, but he's putting prostitutes up as Madonnas. 
was it was heresy, but the most accuracy visually in Italian Renaissance, just incredible. So I mean, I can never get close to that freshness and stuff. But I wanted to um, emulate within the modern. You know, you go down to Osh, you can create things that we'd only dream about in the Renaissance. You go down there, get a couple of lamps, ba ba ba, reflectors, black out the studio, and and um, just follow the um, you know my film school uh, experience, lighting techniques to get this because I know that uh, Derek Jarman directed Caravaggio film with one twenty five k lamp, and that was it the whole thing, pro diffused it, pro bam, the dynamics, it's super dynamic as well. I think I think um when I see the painting, I think I'll maybe go into um, You do it now. I'll go into the process of what I was going through in my in my mind as I was doing it. Because it's all about you guys at the end of the day, but I had to go through my own personal journey which was particular to me, not necessarily to you, you know, it's like, it's the book that I'm reading, but it happens to be you, and your yeah. story. Um, incredible, I can't, I can't wait to see this, actually. I might think I might crack another beer. And here we are. Oh, shit. <laughs> Don't break. Oh, wow. That is a very cool frame. Mm -hmm. It could be a renaissance. What's it made out of? Probably some sort of plastic, I think. Mm. It doesn't look it. It looks pretty, pretty legit. Let's see it against the wall. Where are you going to hang it? Oh, it's on the wall. We already have it. Can you put it up? Sure. You're going to put it right here? Right down? <laughs> you should just get an Ikea lamp, put it in the side, nice diffused light with bring it up real good and set yeah. up a spot. You know? I told Caesar you told me to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like 20 bucks and I'll give you... Uh, filmmakers use them for lighting films or nice and diff because you don't want too much shine off that because I spent a, a rather long time making this thing look old. Like about six layers of varnish with a heat gun with crackle varnish and being a bit of a chemist and trying to put years on it, you know, stain. It looked too new when it was just finished. It looked too bright. And then I had to bring it back down again. I'm quite pleased with the patine, which is the surface of the painting. Um, you know, you can walk past the gallery and not take a second look at that, you know. But the content, come on, ask me about the content. Come on, show you guys are like, <laughs> what was going on in your mind, Roderick, when you're painting this in relationship to the fair you? Because it's all about you at the end of the day. Why did you commission a painting like this? <laughs> hmm. Why did I commission it? Pretty much um, the easiest answer was because um, we're e egotistical. That's, you know, <laughs> but you're of course. No, and we took an art you. class. We <laughs> took an art class and we're, we're egomaniacs. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, it, it's easy because it's, it's, it's always just truth to it. <laughs> um, but we wouldn't have chosen anyone or else it would have been done a long time ago. Yeah, you know, I just happened to be around. <laughs> I was convenient. No, not at all. I think it was about <laughs> you were convenient. Yeah, what's convenient is if I take a picture and then I take it to IKEA for them to print it in the canvas and then I just put it on my wall. No kidding. Yeah, but it's not quite that, is it? You're gonna have to live with this in like twenty years' time and explain to your grandchildren what happened. How did you know Plato? <laughs> 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 Justin, <laughs> look, he thought, I mean, like, it was painting, you. Uh, uh, I'll tell you about the whole process, um, so I really wanted to talk about it, uh, Caesar got got into it straight away, it just, there was like clouds appearing in front of my brush, just making shapes, you know, and then I knew that robe that you were wearing and your right hand were going to give me a run for my money. It was just so intricate, and I had to get on top of it. And it was, um, you know, part of me of an artist is beginning to say, well, am I tapping into different energies between the pair of you? And maybe that's why the pair of you work the way you do, you know. Uh, you're real mellow, Caesar, and, and you're intricate. You're a bit like a Rolex watch. 
just another <laughs> 17 jewels that are all taken away and stuff you know that's the best compliment i've that, ever had that's hilarious <laughs> yes but that, that's what i got from the painting yeah that's why i had to take my mind to i had to really break it down there was parts of it your left hand that I left real sketchy the gesture was just so visceral i left it pretty much the first strokes in the brush with your right hand it was the way you gestured it it's just <laughs> like what are you saying here it's very real particular but I, at the very end of it when it was driving me nuts i realized what was going on anatomically mm -hmm. then i could justify it but um yeah your poor caesar just it was just like rock you know like, bam just like a few strokes i could have left you the first strokes that i did i took you on board and on the, on that and then, then the books, the Odyssey, I spelt it wrong. I'm just <laughs> I had to re go back over it just before delivery so that I could put some food in my mouth, which I appreciate. So you, know, you did mm -hmm. just, you know, at that time, um, it was a fair deal. And I just went out to Ralph's and bought protein and carbohydrates. These drugs everyone's talking about. Mm. They're all <laughs> the rage, I hear, you know from the vantage point of being a struggling artist, but you know, that's the way it is sometimes, but not all the time, of course. But um, yeah, well done in the frame. That, 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 I, I could see that in Florence. I think that's all I can say about the frame. I could see that in Florence, I wouldn't give that a second look. Do you know my stuff gets stopped in the borders? It does. It does. Yeah, I've mm -hmm. got the provenance. If you want to check with me, I'll send you the UPS where it bounced from LA to London to Cologne, back to London. And I believe it did go back to Cologne again and then back to London. And eventually to Scotland. After my mother said to Her Majesty's Customs and Excise, that's not a copy, that's my son's work. <laughs> she was so proud, but my client was pissed. <laughs> off. Yeah. He Dang. was getting for his girlfriend like two uh, days later, but I was like, yeah. and I watched a documentary about fakes and stuff, and there is one office in Cologne that deals with verification, and my little painting got its ass over to that <laughs> office, and I was like, if these fools have just flipped the board, the board, it was a wooden panel, uh, Tamara de Lampica painting, Adam and Eve, um, if these fools flipped the board over, it said Home Depot in the back. <laughs> Call me old fashioned, but I'm really reluctant to think that they might have had Home Depot back in 1930s in Poland. <laughs> you know, it went to Cologne. And even after Cologne, Her Majesty's Customs and Exercise was saying, it's just a real thing. I got a heat gun, dude, man. It's fucking burning out, cracking out, rubbing rum into it, like, you know, like it did with yours. So yeah, our painting I'm has really, rum? I'm really happy with that <laughs> patine. It's just the patina. It's just the way the light catches on it. It's years and years of cracks and heat waves and dampness and and cigar smoke and, you know, whatnot. Church smoke, candle smoke. Cat hair. Cat hair. <laughs> I had it by the bucket load. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking after four cats, a pit bull and a German shepherd for six weeks while their owners went to Cuba, uh, Lima, uh, Art Basel and then Aspen. Well, I'm shoving up there. Yeah, you don't want to go there. Mm. You really don't. But uh, anyway, but I did this painting during that whole process. I w right. Tell us about that. Right. Yeah. Whole yeah, thing. yeah. 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 I'll grab us a beer and I'll, I'll tell grab you it. all yeah. about it, Caesar. <laughs> um, the whole process. I remember distinctly, like, with this painting, I can't use, like, student, student quality. I, I go and get artist quality paints, and they cost, it's like 20 bucks for a tiny little tube of black, but it is the most pure black you'll ever get. And, when, <laughs> and amongst all these graffiti artists, and they're using black bra, like, off the shelf, but mine was the most intense black, and amongst all the graffiti and stuff, it was just super void you know and i remember whenever i was first tracing out the images of you guys and i dropped the first layer of that pure black it was it was epic it was just like pitch black and of course it 
deteriorates when it dries a little bit, but it, it kind of, where I was in my life at that time, it seemed like a black curtain had pulled over my whole life. You know, relationships and situations and interpreting different uh, energies and stuff. It, it, the lights went out. It was like an eclipse when I, I did that first layer of black. And then slowly but surely the characters emerge. And it was like a bright light shining on them. And the subject matter to me is poetic. You know, the Odyssey. I feel like McLeod's, myself, meeting you guys through that, it was an Odyssey. I mean, my God, I was there for what? One and a half years. I lived practically outside it for half a year. And it was an Odyssey. But I, I sense with the frame going on it, I'm really punctuating it, and I think it's actually the end of a story, but of course, it's the beginning of a new one for many of us. Mm -hmm. um, but McLeod's, you know, off the wall graffiti, everything, I channeled it into the artwork. Even though it's two random guys standing with a pint of beer, having a rock and roll time, some guys looking at some lens into the future <laughs> <laughs> and you know it intrigued me but my back was against the wall when I came out painting that and um, I think even though I'm just a forger I'd like to think that I got into the spirit of Caravaggio real easy because I owed man money to Her Majesty's customers in exiles and it just so happens my brother works for the Queen. He's the Queen's Council. It all get a bit intense, mm -hmm. you know. But lo and behold, it all worked out. But during, but I imagine that Caravaggio would be in these dramas all the time with the dynamics of the the Pope and the patrons and he's on the run and I'm on the run from her Majesty, and she's looking after her. For, she's looking for five grand out my ass. There's great parents. And then Dan, um, a wonderful old auntie of mine in my dad's side of the family, um, left me a truckload of money, and I could just like just be gone. Mm -hmm. It was a scepter ever since I've been in America, like my bagage and stuff. And it's all gone now. It's all, it's all gone. But all I want to do is paint. See, so. I mean, this whole process, I love you guys. I think I got to know you more ways than many people will ever know you. Uh, but I'm going to take this technique, which I've cultivated, and I'm going to apply it to my own narrative. Now, mm -hmm. But you were my narrative during that whole process. You got me through a real dark time in my life. Just by whatever was going on, I need to get this done. I need to get this done. I need to get this done. And it kept me, it kept me sane. It kept me awake in the midst of um, a lot of darkness. Really. Sorry, I'm rambling. No, no. It's, all, it's off on but the heart. I could, I could talk about this painting forever, actually. It's, it never took a chunk. It gave me a chunk, actually. It never took a chunk. It actually gave me a chunk. Give me a lifeline to remind me that I'm an artist. I can break stuff down. I can emulate. I can get into the spirit of things. No overwork things. And everything. And that's what I want to do. I'm going to move into a studio downtown. I'm just going to paint. The gods have punished me by fulfilling my desire, which is just to paint. Just to wake up every day and paint. And I'm not exploiting anybody. Um, you know, that's the life I want to live. And, you know, guys like you, my social worker friend, are people that really kindle that fire, you know, always. Not just on the surface, like flashing and glances, but kindle the fire. I remember you came over like three quarters of the way through the progress and you were watching the easel. And I was like, this is kind of trippy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know. We've but had this up here for uh, like a week, I think. You know, people can't just can't believe that's real. What do you mean can't believe it's not like real? They can't. Well, not that 
like they, a photo. It's not that they can't believe it's real. It's more like they can't believe that you commissioned that it. Yeah, everything that, that it's been done. It's been <laughs> done. How it looks and how it's on the wall. Like no way, really. Like one reaction was a guy just turned to me. He's like, "Hey, that's you." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, we know it's you. Like, it's yes, you. it is. <laughs> you admit you, which is a good thing. Yeah, as you do, it's Justin. <laughs> D- what? And all these people, how do they find you? How do you, How do they get to you? How do they get their own personalized portrait? Yeah. To look as amazing as ours. I read that a capper crombie like the t-shirts on uh, Instagram. You'll find me. So we're going to add that on to the Twitter, description. Yeah. It's, it's Rod Abercrombie. Which has sort of like deep connotations of like my British heritage. Because I drive a Jaguar. A Jag. <laughs> One of the finest engineers and materials in the history of humankind. And I drive it from bank to bank, robbing them. <laughs> like with a <laughs> raccoon mask. But yeah, it's yeah. Jonesy's jukebox. Thank you. Over and on. Yeah, remember the time. It was great. Johnny Rock. Right from the man's mouth. That's it. <laughs> You just witnessed a conversation that we had in room 403. 